The 12 Hour Dress Photoplay, September 1927 From luncheon to supper, all without a change of costume. Carmel Myers designed this 4-in-1 dress for the girl whose dates overlap. The gown is also called the Bermuda Onion because it can be unpeeled in layers. Carmel considers it the biggest invention since rolled stockings or the trick cigarette lighter. In the first picture, you see the frock as it is worn for luncheon, a dark blue duvetine ensemble embroidered in beige. The coat comes off and presto, an afternoon frock with an apron front and skirt of dark blue and a bodice of pale blue braided in a darker shade. The apron unbuttons, and when it is removed, as in the third picture, Miss Myers is garbed for dinner in a frock with a blue chiffon blouse and a white skirt, with a bodice of silver ribbon. Will wonders ever cease? The sleeves snap off at the armholes, and finally we have Carmel all ready to step out for a dance. Now, don't ask us where Miss Myers parks the pieces of her costume as she leaps from date to date. How to Dress for Trying Roles Esther Ralston proves that correct clothes lighten the hardest tasks. Photoplay, March 1928 The girl who goes gardening in a chiffon dress, a small hat, and high-heeled shoes, courts a torn frock, a sunburn, and tired feet. If you would enjoy your flowers, wear a smock, a large hat, gloves, and get a pad to keep your knees off the damp ground. Tennis can be torture in long sleeves, a wool skirt that is tight over the hips, and rubber-soled sandals which do not support the feet during a vigorous set. Black, for sports, is hot and dusty. Tennis is fun in a white sleeveless frock, with a full pleated skirt and regulation tennis shoes. Unless your hair is very short, wear a bandeau. And for the love of Helen Wills, no jewelry. At the right, you see a lady in for a bad afternoon. The umbrella will never cover that big hat. The shoes will spring a leak, and the fur trimming will soon look like a wet cat. Moreover, the pleats will come out of the skirt. And behold, at near right, a young person who will look chic in the worst weather. When dishwashing is drudgery. Long sleeves, lace collars and cuffs, and the jabot to absorb dishwater. Ruffles to catch on every corner, and jeweled hands at the mercy of soapy water. Kitchen work needn't be messy if you have a pretty apron, comfortable shoes, and a pair of rubber gloves. Notice too that Miss Ralston slicks back her hair to keep it out of eyes. Favorite Street Costumes Photoplay, April 1928 Eileen Pringle, Black Hair, Green Eyes Eileen selects a tailored suit of gray serge with white pinstripes. The hat is gray felt with a crown trimmed in silver mesh. She wears a jade pin. Marion Davies, blonde hair, blue eyes. She chooses a Russian coat of white handwoven linen crash. The pocket ornament is appliqued in silks, lavender, green, yellow, and pale blue. The belt is of white kid. With it, Marion wears a white aviator hat, white shoes, trimmed in green and nude silk chiffon hose. Ruth Taylor, blonde hair, blue eyes. Ruth's coat is of wood nymph beige kasha, with shawl collar and deep cuffs of golden beige fox. The skirt is brown kasha, and the blouse is peach beige. She wears tan and brown oxfords and a beige felt hat. Colleen Moore, dark auburn hair. One brown eye and one blue eye. Probably because of her mixed eyes, Colleen sticks to one tone in her street dress, sand color. The coat is quilted velvet, and the one-piece frock is of heavy silk crepe. The tan felt hat has a butterfly ornament of cocoa yarn. The handbag is cocoa antelope skin. B.B. Daniels. Black hair, dark brown eyes. All in dark brown velvet. The sable-trimmed coat may be used for informal evening wear. The only ornament on the hat is a dull gold buckle. The shoes are satin. Clara Bow, Red hair, brown eyes. The coat, rose cocoa velvet. The skirt, pleated beige crepe. 
The hat, dark brown velour. The shoes, parchment kid. There you are, flappers. Norma Shearer. Medium brown hair, blue eyes. Neither blonde nor brunette, she wears a dark green skirt with lighter blouse. The coat is robin's egg blue. The hat, blue with a dark green design. The Wets and the Dries, a collection of bathing suits, some for the beach and others for swimming before the camera. Photoplay, September 1928. When Patricia Avery, the Christie Mermaid, goes into deep water, she wears the jersey suit at the upper left. The sandals are made of rubber and won't hold the sand. The bag on her arm is the suit holder. At the immediate left is Patricia making a dive for publicity. The hat and parasol are woven of raffia. The rest of the outfit explains itself. Vera Reynolds is wearing a suit that may be launched in any ocean. It's a white Bradley with red polka dots here and there. Belt, cap, and moccasins are also red and white. It's a suit made for the most strenuous swimming. Anita Page dons another Bradley model and dares the surf to do its worst. The suit has gray and light blue checks and is worn with a white fabric belt. Anita prefers a silk handkerchief, tied pirate style, to a rubber cap. When Miss Page wants to swim in the rotographer section of the newspapers for MGM, she wears the suit at the left. It is cobweb black lace over flesh-colored Georgette, and, hold everything, ornamented with imitation pearl four-leaf clovers. At the upper right is Alice White all dressed up for a first national bathing beauty parade. If it rains, she's out of luck. The suit is beach broadcloth with a design of autumn leaves. The bag is a combination suit carrier and pillow. To your immediate right is Alice as she really looks in close proximity to the ocean. The geese on Lillian Tashman's bathing suit are ornamental, not symbolic. Lillian doesn't make a goose of herself when she wears this outfit, designed by Howard Greer, to the beach. The suit is knitted jersey, and the coat and hat are hand-blocked linen. Around the Clock Howard Greer designs a sartorially perfect day for Lillian Tashman. Photoplay, September 1928 For luncheon at the beach or the country club, what could be better than the sports ensemble? The quilted coat is of pink kasha. Its trimming of white ermine gives it a touch of elegance not usually associated with sports clothes. The coat is worn over a dress of pink crepe and kasha. The costume is called the Skyler Road, and it is a deluxe model only to be worn when one is merely an ornamental onlooker at sports events. Half the secret of success is to start the day right. Any gown will look its best if worn over this fitted combination suit of white antique fillet and hand embroidery. Mr. Greer of Hollywood makes clothes for American women. Notice, please, the trim, snug lines so hard to find in French lingerie, even though you may be willing to pay a breathtaking price. For the afternoon, Miss Tashman literally puts on the Ritz. That is the name of this black satin street dress. It is set off by a double king fox scarf. And, incidentally, single fox scarves are now an indication either of indifference to fashion or bleak, grim poverty. With Paris going frantic on sports clothes, Mr. Greer pauses to design a street dress that doesn't look as though its owner had just walked off the golf links. What to wear with the evening gown? Miss Tashman finds the answer in Dorothy, a rose taffeta wrap. It has a shirred bodice and shoulders, caterpillar effect. Half concealed in the neck ruff are pearled camellias. The skirt is wide and flaring, with a narrow fringed hem. When Miss Tashman steps out to a Hollywood film premiere in this costume, the crowd in front of the theater sets up a loud hurrah. And so to bed, in a negligee nightgown made of black lace. The nightgown is worn with a matching coat of chiffon, but one doesn't sleep in the coat, even on the coldest nights. This boudoir costume represents Mr. Greer's revolt against the pajama suit, which, he believes, is lacking in feminine charm. Any woman who couldn't be happy in this evening gown is just an old cross patch. Mr. Greer calls it Laco de Como, which means Lake Como. It, the gown, not the lake, is made of three shades of rose chiffon and is embroidered in silver and pearl. 
The skirt dips in the back almost touching the floor. The gown is one of the many reasons why Lillian Tashman is known as the best dressed woman in Hollywood and why she gets those ritzy roles. If winter comes. To expect a girl to go through cold weather with only one fur coat is just sheer cruelty. Photoplay, December 1928. To the right is a Hudson Seal sport coat, conveniently short for walking and warmly lined in green suede. The lining also forms the scarf collar, and incidentally, keeps the fur from rubbing the neck. All in all, a practical and attractive coat for football games, polo matches, whippet races, skating, or what have you. Who remembers when a fur coat was just a fur coat, without design, style, or tailoring? Howard Greer designed this daytime coat of American broadtail in two shades of tan, and achieved a grace of line usually found only in more pliable cloths. Like the other coats on this page, all of which are Mr. Greer's creations, it is worn by Josephine Dunn. Unless you have at least one ermine coat in Hollywood, you can't hope to step out socially. The three-tier cape effect gives this particular coat an interestingly different shoulder line. Greer calls it La Tosca, because a lady who wears it should live only for art and love. Our old friend Indian Baranduki is used in this walking coat at the right. It is lined with kasha and has a kasha scarf to match. Not for evening or formal wear, of course, but a good all-round coat for either city or country wear, and equally appropriate either for sports or business. If you are tall and slim, like Josephine Dunn, you can wear a coat like the one shown above. If you are short and dumpy, beware of the long fur coat. They call this design Ikes. It is of American broadtail in beige, with a Kalinske collar. Note the way in which the sleeves are held tight above the wrist, to keep the wintry blasts from blowing up chiffon sleeves. A wraparound evening coat of lapin. You will have to imagine the beauty of its warm golden coloring, although you can see the richness of the fur. The wide shawl collar, which extends below the hips, definitely places it as a very new model. It is an ideal wrap to wear with the smart new beige and brown evening dresses. Mr. Greer christened this wrap, Paraquet. Dressing a good game. Once it was not so hot. Today, chic clothes make champions. Photoplay, September 1928. Modern golf is excellent for displaying perfect form. Gwen Lee has no sleeves to bind her, no hose to run. She knows her niblicks. But in Mother's Day, girls had things on their minds, particularly those fuzzy scotch tams and the vague feeling that a spoon shot sounded faintly improper. Gaze on the little water wow, center, ready to launch forth on that abandoned breaststroke. Compare her with the trim young thing illustrating the new freedom of the seas. When a girl arrives at the tennis court gowned with comfortable distinction, the man behind the net knows she has a beautiful serve. Formerly, her costume warned him that the only stroke the poor darling would get was one of apoplexy. Clothes that speak French Some Paris costumes that show the excellent taste of Marion Davies' personal wardrobe. Photoplay, January 1929 Don't try to wear a helmet hat with a strap unless you have a well-shaped chin, and only one. This Lewis hat is of gray felt. With it, Marion Davies wears a gray cloth coat, from Jenny, with a wide collar of white fox flecked with black tips. The trousers of this lay-long lounging costume are almost as wide as a skirt. The pajamas are of white satin, made all in one piece. And the coat is black velvet with large white dots and edged with white satin. This Jenny evening coat is of thin, shimmering gold cloth, with an interwoven design of blue and gold. Around the uneven hem is a narrow fringe of gold beads. It has a collar of silver fox. With it, Miss Davies carries a flat gold bag from Milgram. There's a dash about this Calot creation that suggests a Russian military coat. It is three quarters length, with a tight-fitting back and flaring skirt. The color is ash rose, embroidered in gold, and luxuriantly trimmed in sable. 
Marion is most charming in this lay long evening gown of white lace. Like all good evening dresses, it has a decided dip with a tight waistline and a bit of fullness at the hips. The waist is bolero effect, plain in front but full and dipping at the back. Another youthful evening gown, this one from Lanvin. It is oyster white satin, and here and there on the full skirt are medallions of pearls and brilliance. A jeweled band falls from the high neckline to the edge of the ankle length skirt. Costumes with the Dramatic Instinct Hollywood challenges Paris to create a more interesting collection of gowns. Photoplay, February 1929 Joan Crawford in a sedate mood that was evoked by this charming and conservative dress by Howard Greer. It is of black moire, and it has a molded hip line, only broken by a bow on the left side. With this formal gown, Miss Crawford wears no jewels except a pair of crystal bracelets. This dress is printed white velvet, and it has a scarf caught on the right shoulder with a bunch of camellias. The neckline is high in the front and low in the back, which is a habit of evening gowns these days. A really stellar evening gown. Adrian, its creator, has named it Nordic Night. The sequins and crystal beads embroidered on the white souffle background represent icicles. The gown has a long, narrow panel in the back, falling in train effect. Rhinestone slipper buckles and diamond bracelets add to the glittering ensemble. Not all of Hollywood's frocks are beyond the purse or the personality of the average girl. Some of the best movie designs are both youthful and simple. As witness, this sport costume by Greer. It is a light gray camel's hair with an upside-down fleur-de-lis pattern of red jersey that edges the jumper and forms a panel design on the front of the skirt. A dress for a mystery play, designed by Adrian. Just the thing to wear if you are going to steal the letters. Adrian calls it the toga, in deference to the Romans. It is fashioned of rayon velvet, and the whole secret of its success is in its artful draping and the long flowing scarf which extends from the elbow to the hemline. This is the evening coat that Miss Crawford wears with Nordic Knight. The coat is of white satin, with a huge stand-up collar and wide cuffs of white fox fur. The circular skirt is embroidered with a particularly beautiful design in silver. The coat, too, has a sweeping panel in the back, to synchronize, as it were, with the train of the gown.